One of the most remarkable Olympus Zuiko lenses is the 7-14 Pro, a specialist wide-angle optic which, at 7mm, is equivalent to 14 in film. This, to use a bit of jargon, is serious stuff. Its qualities are best realized inside buildings, especially churches. It can be used for landscapes, but unless you have a dominant foreground, its extreme wide-angle perspective is less well-suited, where everything is pushed back, looking incredibly tiny. For example, in this shot from the Stiper Stones, Snowden it's somewhere there in the distance. You can hardly see it. That, of course, may not be the point, but whenever I take a group of photographers to this spot, I like to point out Snowden, particularly on a clear day such as this, which is not often the case, and yet when we are able to see Snowden, we can hardly see it. We immediately realized the benefit of the 7-14 lens on a shoot inside Canterbury Cathedral, and, incidentally, how often does the photographer achieve a view down the nave without people? A whole world of different possibilities opens up, compositional effects not possible with other Zuiko lenses, even the much favoured 12-100 Pro lens. The one big plus of a super wide angle lens is huge depth of field, plus the benefit of micro four thirds technology, even at full aperture. This is especially important inside a low-lit church or stately home where tripods aren't permitted. If something is close to the camera and the background needs to be sharp, knowledge of the hyperfocal distance is important. That is, manually focusing a little way into the image, say 50 feet instead of the background, otherwise the foreground may be unsharp as depth of field extends twice as much beyond the point of focus as in front. Outdoors, even on a dull day, using a smaller aperture will increase depth of field further. Because of its greater wide-angle span, some perspective distortion will occur even when the camera is horizontal. When the camera is tilted slightly up or down, converging or diverging verticals will show. However, they can work to the photographer's advantage, but the main trick inside buildings is not to include the floor, otherwise the building looks as if it is about to fall over. This is not so important for landscapes. Nevertheless, in Dovedale, I was hemmed in by tall limestone cliffs. In order to include as much as possible in a confined space, the camera was pointed up, but the two runners do seem to lean a bit. The Zuiko 7-14 works well in confined spaces. This is one of my favourites, taken within the cloisters at Gloucester Cathedral. The fan vaulting is the attraction, but using 7mm has produced some distortion. The two arms of the cloisters should be at right angles, but that is not the case with this image. Outdoors, the lens is also impressive with its exaggerated perspective in confined spaces or in gardens, especially close-ups where the increased depth of field ensures that what should be sharp is sharp. I have used the 7-14 outdoors, but it is not my favourite optic for landscapes. You often feel that you are in a straitjacket because, for the composition to make sense, foreground interest is essential. 
12 mm with either the 12 to 100 or 12 to 200 is plenty and they do not push detail back to the point it disappears and when a 3000 foot mountain looks more like a molehill not to mention a photographic cliche also these outstanding optics can serve as excellent high-quality all-rounders, particularly if you are tramping over moorland and mountain for 15 miles. One thing to watch very carefully with the 7-14 is rainwater. Yes, because of its extended depth of field, especially at F11 or smaller, any rainwater will show. Yes, there are times out of doors when its extreme wide angle is impressive, be it the Angel of the North or a bit of creative fun with one of the guns at Deal Castle. Like the symmetry, for me, the Zuiko 7-14 Pro lens really comes into its own with interiors and, in my case, churches. And I conclude with a few more, beginning with the totally outrageously designed church by Pugin at Cheadle in Staffordshire.